Hello. Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Yes, I came back from Milan and I'm quite sad because I bought like a half of a kilo of a coffee and I lost this in a plane. So if anyone have a kind of contact to EasyJet and maybe know something about my lavazza, please let me know. Um, my name is Lucas Zelezny and you know, it's been 15 years in SEO. I am, I've been since like a kid. I was born in Poland, so you can recognize my accent potentially. 10 years I'm living in London, but I was born in Poland in a small town, and I was always in music, and I wanted always to be a kind of a DJ. I was really into drum and bass. You need to understand that drum and bass was a huge thing in Poland, in the sense like if you was listening to drum and bass, then you was a cool guy. In UK, it was more like a mainstream. In Poland, it was very niche, and I wanted to play gigs, and I was from a small town. So I had no chance to go to Krakow or, or, or Warsaw. And I built a website, and then I started to thinking how to get the traffic. That was 2000, there was no Google Analytics. I just figured out how to track the traffic, and so on, and so on, and so on. Then I figured out that, unfortunately, parents doesn't want to pay your bills for the rest of your life. And I was thinking like, okay, let me retire from drum and bass a little and switch into SEO full time. So I moved to England 2007, and after a couple of in-house roles, Finally, I found um, my dream company, which is Uswitch, right now a part of ZPG, so Zupla, um, Manico UK, and uh, Home Track Property Software Group, and we all are under ZPG. And you can imagine Uswitch uh, is a price comparison website, a big thing um, in, in the UK, um, and there are lots of competitors, lots of different industries, so because of that, it's a very, very challenging and competitive market, and me and my team, we need to learn every day. We are in very good position because we have lots of interaction with uh, Zupla SEO team as well. Right now, uh, after money acquisition, we also have interaction with money SEO team. So it's really, really educational, really challenging, and I love this every day. And today, I just wanted to bring to you something maybe a bit geeky, uh, three tactics that you can literally take home and implement into your businesses. Something that we invented, something that we discovered, something that you may not find uh, a lot about this online reading search engine land, search engine journal, but I feel this is where the added value is. So let me start. This is the tactic one, um, the snapshot approach to keyword research. And this is, imagine that one day in August 2012, I joined U-Switch. I passed the interview. I've been the happiest man on the planet, but I was also the most stressed man on the planet because I quickly wanted to deliver. And this is my approach to quickly deliver, to make the line manager, the, the boss of, my, um, of myself, the, the person I'm reporting to, believing that that was a good decision, that SEO is working well, that it was worth to bring an SEO in-house. So anyone is using search metrics as a software, raise your hand. We have a couple of people. Wow, nice, good choice. Um, search metrics is cool, and search metrics are lots of function. I wanted to focus on one, the major one, which is show me the keywords I already rank. Obviously, you can do the same with uh, Google Search Console, but Search Metrics is giving you much more because it's giving you search volume, it's giving you re um, corresponding URLs. Every time you're thinking about keywords, you need to think about corresponding URLs. What URL is triggered by this keyword? And when I, when I let's say, joining the company, this is how it looks. I'm just simply saying, like, hey, Search Metrics, show me where you switch is ranking in Google Co. UK today. And I'm getting a bunch of keywords. It looks nice, but it's not perfect, mainly because there are some keywords that I already rank one, so I cannot be better than this, technically, because I will go later to another tactic and I will show you that maybe you can even be better than one. And also there is lots of keywords that belongs to third party brand. Imagine if GiveGaf, it's a brand name of the provider. If someone is typing in Google GiveGaf, I know that there is lots of search volume, but you know the traffic rather is dedicated to GiveGaf. People want to see GiveGaf websites. So it's not a keyword I should be bothered. So there is a built-in filter, and I'm filtering the simple way. I'm saying, show me keywords that are ranking between position two and 10, and the search volume is less than 20,000, or 1,000 to 20,000. And I'm getting something much more interesting, lots of generic keywords, 
uh, best SIM only deals, loan, bad credit, iPhone 5 has gold, energy comparison, and so on and so on and so on. And what is even more important, I have lots of data um, regarding to search volume, regarding to position, and also these keywords are pointing into different URLs, different products. And this is very important that we're not focusing on one product and we're doing all the efforts on the one product and we're pushing forever and ever, and sometimes it may not work. You're trying to attack different part of the website, and even if one or two products is too competitive today that you cannot rank. The other one are going up, the traffic is going up, and you can sleep well. So now, think about this. What is this? This is an uh, organic distribution uh, model of click-through rate, simplified. Simplified because you can easily challenge me and say, Lucas, I don't agree that on the first position, the click-through rate is 18.2%. And I will say, you know what? You're right. Because this is just to show you a thing that it's significant difference to be first or second, and there is not much difference if you are seventh, eighth, ninth, or ten. Why I'm saying about this? Because it's very important to try to fight for the first spot in Google search um, results pages, in Google SERPs. And that is a math which is standing behind this. So now, let me go a bit deeper. This part is really flat. Between position five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, there is not much difference in click to rate. But here is a sweet spot. And now let's take a keyword best SIM only deals, which got 18,841 searches in Google Co. UK. And let's do a simple math. Let's use this 18 person and let's try to estimate the traffic. If we would be on position two, we would get about 1,893 visits if there would be no PPC ads, yeah? If we were be one, uh, position one, we would get 3,294 visits. That's almost double. That's 1,400 visits extra in a month time. And now imagine if you start replicating this optimization over and over and over and over on other keywords, the impact is tremendous. We're talking about not 1,000, we're talking about hundreds of thousand visits. So how I'm preparing myself to this task, I'm just creating a simple um, table in Excel, position one to 10 with click to rate, and I'm building kind of a matrix. One matrix I called traffic index, the other one I'm calling traffic index max. What's the different traffic index is that aggregated matrix, which is combining position, click to rate, and search volume of keywords right now. TI max is the scenario if I would be first on all the keywords I selected. And finally, the most important, TI diff, so the difference between what would happen if I would be there on the first spot and where, where I am right now. So this is the difference. And this is how the spreadsheet looks like. I'm using a lot of conditional formatting. I love colors. I love colors. Um, you know, I, I probably that's why I love SEO, because I was never that good with math, but I always, I was like my granny when she was 88, she bought a book for kids to math, and I was like, granny, what are you doing? And she was like, always this math was fascinating, but I was never good with the numbers. I was like, all right, and I am a bit like my granny. I always wanted to play with numbers, but again, like, you know, SEO is giving me this fair balance between being more about linguistic uh, side and a bit about math. So I'm using this, and obviously, back in the day, people were using search volume and saying like, okay, search volume is highest, and so on, and so on, and so on. Right now, we're using TI difference. That's the sweet spot, that's the aggregated metrics. And think about this, it's like you have um, TI difference, which is giving you um, imagination about the potential, how much traffic you can earn, and also you're talking about keywords which already are ranking in top 10, so on the first results page of Google. So there is already traffic. This is like you have a window and you open the window a little and now you need to open the window even more to get more fresh air, which is an etymology for traffic. So if you sort this by search volume and uh, TI diff, the, the, the lists are a bit different. And obviously, you know, I just really, really, really want you to say, you know what, that was very useful, and I know that on the screen it may look a bit geeky, so there is a link, zelezny.uk slash snapshot, where you can download this spreadsheet. It's zelezny, not zelensky, not zeleny, 
um, but Zelezny, it's a difficult surname, only my mom can spell it. But uh, if you go there, you can, you can download this and you can add your keywords, you can play with your search volume, and so on and so on and so on and so on. So that was tactic one. And then optimization. When you selected these keywords and you know the corresponding URLs, what then will happen? You need to optimize. And optimization is kind of a simple process like you was doing back in the day. So modify title tag, add strong tag into some phrases that you want to rank on. Modify alt tag of the images that are there. One that can be a bit new for you. Make sure that the file name of the picture, of the images that you're using on the landing pages are descriptive. So if, let's say you want to rank on keyword uh, holidays in Egypt, and you have three pictures on this page, don't use 123.jpg. You know, because Google don't know at all what is on this picture. Um, how Google is better and better to, to understand what is on the picture. But if you will write holidays hyphen in hyphen Egypt dot JPEG, holidays hyphen in hyphen Hurgada dot PNG, that works much better. Additional paragraphs with text. Make sure that you're not writing content for sake of writing. Make sure that. The content you wrote describe the problem, answered the best way on the problem that people may have. I, I know that back in the day there was like, you know what, we need a 300 pages, 300 words. We have a freelancer in Philippines who can write this. You know, I have lots of respect to these guys who are writing for freelance, but you need to have an insider. And I will tell you like in Newswitch, for example, the only, f um, the only content that can be written by is the content written by in-house copywriters. I have one freelancer, and you know who he, who he is? An ex-employee. Because we have a ton of voice, because there is lots of um, um, legal requirements, because you need to know the product you're writing about, and so on, and so on, and so on. So it's not that easy to say, hey, I will take a freelancer to write. And if you may ask me, okay, Lucas, so what would be the ideal length of the content? I would say at least 1,000 words. At least, and I know it sometimes sounds ridiculous, especially for someone with the journalist background. Why we should write thousand words? That's ridiculous. I know, but one guy from Google said to me, you know, you are not anymore in the position to negotiate. You just follow or you are not ranking. And he was right. That was actually the answer uh, in Poland on the SEO conference about penalty. Where, what if the penalty was Google set up penalty and it was not fair? And the guy was straightforward. He was like, listen, you are not in a position to negotiate. You just need to fix even if you feel like this is not fair. So unfortunately, this is the rule. The same like title tag should be 60 characters and meta description 160. So let's follow this. Finally, headers. One H1, very important. Not two, not three, not zero, just one. H2, H3, fine. You can have multiple. Internal links with uh, keywords, so make sure that your page is internally linking between each other. There is an amazing plugin for WordPress. Anyone is using WordPress professionally? Raise your hand. Okay, we have lots of people. You know, WordPress is sometimes not the best because of the page speed, but lots of things can be sorted by plugins. Remember that there is one plugin which is called SEO Smart Links. You can load a list of keywords. You can load a corresponding URLs, and it will start automatically linking between pages. That's very, very useful because you're decreasing bounce rate, and you're increasing the page per, sec uh, page per sessions that a uh, user is um, performing every visit. When to use this tactic? When you're starting working on organic performance, when you are like stressed like me in 2012, when you want quickly to deliver for a website with established history. Unfortunately, that may be a bit difficult to implement for a new businesses, but for everyone who got like a bit of history, who can find rankings, and you don't need to use some uh, search metrics. You can use SEMrush, you can use Systrix, you can use SpyFu, you can use Ahrefs, to get this data I showed you. And when you quickly need to prove SEO is worth. Sometimes organization is like, you know, we had this guy uh, who was doing SEO, but we don't believe it's, it, it doesn't work anymore. And I'm like, you know, with SEO is a bit like with Mick Jagger and Real Rolling Stones. He's always saying, like, this is our last concert, and there will be five others which will be also last. Every year I can hear SEO is dead. 
And the next year I can hear again and again. And I'm here with you guys as an SEO technically. So probably it's not that yet. Conclusions, dealing with keywords that already rank, leveraging quality traffic. If these keywords rank, if Google is saying these keywords can rank, that's probably you leveraging quality traffic. You're utilizing multiple URLs. If one, two, five, ten URLs doesn't um, rank, fine, don't worry. Others will be ranking because you need to replicate this model over and over. Every day, 20 keywords, at least. And you're playing search engine game. You're just following Google. You're taking Google as your advisor and delivering quick results. So that was tactic one. Now, tactic two is gap analysis. It may be in some point a bit similar, but overall, it's to find a gap between your website and your competitors. So your competitors is the best source of information. Observing what they are doing is amazing because they also want to achieve good results. They also have a team. They also have uh, people who are working there very hard. And, and you have right now access to so many tools. So this screenshot is from a tool called SEMrush. Anyone is using SEMrush? Raise your hand. Nice, nice. And one, 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 one advice. Don't worry to use two, three tools that are doing potentially the same work. Don't worry to, to, work, to, to use the same time if you have a budget, SEMrush search metrics and uh, SpyFu and Systrix, because you can export keywords all together and then you can have um, a, a wider, wider spectrum of uh, all the keywords that you want to rank on. So this is the example. You're taking Telegraph and you're taking Independent and you're saying, show me where these keywords are ranking together in Google KOK. And you're getting like a bunch of random keywords like Facebook, YouTube, Daily Mail. But you can go deeper. You can say, okay, I want to see Independent and Telegraph and keywords that contain Scotland. I love Scotland. I'm going to Scotland once a year at least. Uh, Caledonian sleeper or, or by, by, by flight just to Highlands, just to chill out. And you can see so many topics here which are related to Scotland. Election in Scotland, Scotland independent, pain, patron saint of Scotland, and so on and so on. So let's switch back to you switch. I can say, show me common keywords where you switch is ranking and um, competitors. I won't be mentioning competitors right now, but I can see very simply that there is something about mortgage. Mortgage insurance, mortgage calc, and so on and so on. And I can see that this is where we're missing content. Mortgage calculator. This is a tool we should probably uh, write article about, mainly because you switch is not ranking on this, and our competitors are. So you can go today and open SEMrush and say like, show me my website and my competitors and where we're not ranking and they are ranking. And this is the order I'm sending to our uh, copywriters. So I'm saying, write me a content, which is 800 words, where my URL will be slash tools slash mortgage calculator, where title tax is given, when the meta description is given, when H1, H2 is given. They know everything. They just need to deliver a content that is written by someone who is an expert in our company. So I would rather, I would rather wait if my copywriters in-house are busy to deliver this tool, uh, this, this content rather than go outside and say like, hey, freelancers, can you, can you deliver 800 words, anything, what you want to write about mortgage calculator because I want to run. No, that doesn't work anymore. And they sitting and they writing. And finally, tactics three, which is dealing with answer boxes. And this is the answer how you want to rank, what, what happens if you want to rank above position one. It's a relatively new thing. And you need to have a process if you want to make this working well. So, what is answer box? Anyone knows? Raise your hand. Featured snippet. Yes. That's are these results that Google is choosing to put above the normal organic results. And this is an example. What is a smart meter? And take a look. We are 
I don't have a laser, but we are here, smart meters in the answer box, and we are here in the organic results. So we are securing two spots. And if I would go to uh, upper floor and say, you know what, PPC guys, can you put and campaign, then we would uh, secure three spots. It's like a win-win situation. You have pen plenty of traffic. And if you remember this click-through rate distribution model where I show you 18%, this one got like sometimes 50%. There is tons of traffic. Unfortunately, there is the other side of the coin. No magic. There is no magic trick, no magic uh, HTML tag, no magic thing to rank there. The only thing you can do to say to Google, hey, Google, I don't want to rank there. But why would you ever do this? Some people are saying like, oh, I don't want my content to show there. I was like, it's like 200 words, 200 characters, maybe 300 characters. Your page is much bigger. If someone will see your page here, will definitely click. And now, how we how we dealing with this? We have a huge process. So you can see that this a smart meter is a new kind of uh, gas and electricity meter. This is taken from our website. A smart meter is new kind of a gas electricity meter. Fine. But first thing I can recommend you, it is use simple English. What does it mean simple English? You know, Google is using AI to decide which website is the best to show there. And Google AI, whatever we would say, is not as good as human. So to make Google AI to understand what you're writing about, use simple English. And you know, it's easy for me who, 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 uh, who is native Polish to understand maybe what simple English means, but for native people who are English born, if you, if you would like to, to, to understand better what simple English may sound like, in Wikipedia, most of the popular articles is written in English and also in simple English. That's this English that six, uh, seven grade kids can pro properly operate. That's probably English I'm using right now, you know. So, so simple English, and then you, you, you just, you just um, rewriting the answer, and Google is like, okay, spot on. We will knock down the other guy and we will put your website up. Another example, what is dual fuel? Anyone know what is dual fuel? Raise your hand when you're paying to gas and um, energy provider, the same gas and energy provider. So people are always asking, what is dual fuel? And we're answering this question the best way. Dual, dual fuel simply means that you receive gas and, and your electricity from the same energy supplier. Honest, direct, simple. And that also exists on our website. And you can see that this text wasn't taken from the top. This text was taken somewhere from the middle. So again, Google is deciding which paragraph is the best to take. How to be there? You s so we were doing a million tests, and we still got very fuzzy answers. But we have some answers. So first, heading and lists. That may help you to be there. Heading and paragraphs. So make, make simple paragraphs, you know, no more than three, four sentences. Use H1, H2, H3 tags. Make sure that you're using div elements. That may help. Make sure that images are using proper alt tags and proper file names. And then keywords that are featuring in this answer box can rotate even daily basis. Don't take this as granted. You may be there today, tomorrow you may not be there because either Google decides to change this or your competitor become smarter. So important elements, page title, meta description, page URL, H1, H2, H3, H4 tag, and all these P uh, lists, bullet lists, um, um, number lists, and so on and so on. But the most important is how to find keywords that fire answer box. So you can guess. You can write shortbread recipe. Like, anyone like shortbread? Like, yes, a Scottish thing. You know, I love, I love shortbread. <laughs> yeah, um, I could talk a lot about Scotland. Um, uh, so shortbread recipe, and take a look. The photo been taken from BBC, the text been taken from BBC, voila, it's here. Champions League groups. 
A group is here and is taken from the BBC Sport, exactly in the same format. So the formats can be different. Finally, UK water rates. Again, you switch. We have a photo, we have a nice uh, text, and it's taken straight from our website. Now, we have a nice method of finding these keywords and less nice method of finding this keyword. The nice method is simple. You go into SEMrush and you're typing a competitor that is sharing keywords between you and you sharing keywords between you and them. Very important thing, you can appear in answer box predominantly if your keyword is ranking in top 10 results, the organic results. If you're ranking somewhere on page two, three, don't be bothered. You first need to push this keyword on the first page. Then you can think about answer box. So, I took BBC as an example. This is a screenshot from SEMrush. Some of you already said that it's using. And there is this box. And in this box, this is this line, which is a um, featured snippet line. And we know that 0.48% of all keywords that SEMrush found BBC ranking on is firing this answer box. Now, simple math, 3,700,000 keywords multiplied by 0.48%, oh, it is 17,760 keywords, a lot. And you can put any of your competitor, and if keywords that they are ranking in answer boxes are keywords that you are ranking in top 10, go for it. Check how they wrote this. Check how you can be better. What else you can write to make your website in Google eyes be a most appropriate to be in answer box. And your traffic, I promise you, if, if I'm wrong, just call me and say, like, Lucas, you was wrong. Your traffic will skyrocket. Uh, your traffic will skyrocket. Um, and then there is less nice method, and I just choose uh, food because I love food-related websites. And I will show you how to do this a bit geeky way. Anyone knows software called URL Profiler? Raise your hand. Okay, we have one person. <laughs> okay, so some, something new, something new. So I choose four keywords that I definitely knew that they will fire answer boxes, but then I will verify this with uh, URL profiler. And these keywords are, are you, as you can expect, they are food related. How to bake a cake, how to bake a pancake, how to bake potato, and how to bake a sweet potato. So questions. Now I'm taking these keywords, and I am converting these keywords into URLs that will fire the specific um, landing, uh, the specific search engine results page on Google. And this is so simple. You just, you just need to add HTTPS slash slash Google co-uk slash search question mark Q equal that keyword, okay? Q equal that keyword. If you want to be super puristic, you can replace spaces in the URL to percent 20, but you don't need to do this. And then you loading these URLs into URL profiler. And then you need to do a magic. Here is a custom scraper. You see? Custom scraper. And this custom scraper needs to have this data. So this is the uh, CSS selector. What this CSS selector says to, uh, to URL profiler? US, uh, this CSS selector says every time URL profiler will find the CSS selector. That means that there is this URL, and that URL will be pulled to the spreadsheet. If answer box doesn't exist, you will get empty data. If answer box exists, you will get the name, the address of the competitor or your website, which is ranking there. So I scrape this and take a look. This four original URLs, and I have a data. The data, in every case, there was some data, WikiHow, Food Network, BBC, and C-Suite Potatoes. And now is a big time to check if I was right. So take a look. First result, how to bake a cake. Do you see this? WikiHow is ranking in answer box. Second result, Food Network is ranking in answer box on keyword how to bake a pancake. The third keyword, how to bake a potato, or how to bake potato. BBC, and my, my, the most favorite example, how to bake a sweet potato, www.ncsweetpotatoes, 
website full about only about sweet potatoes. Yeah? And that way, you can go and check on not only your website, but also your competitors. So when to use answer boxes? When you're dealing with established website and when you're dealing with industry leader, when you have a situation that, you know, you achieved almost everything and you're saying like, what now? You know, we are so much demanding on the search uh, volume. If there is no search volume, then we don't have more traffic, you know. If you're targeting only UK, for example, yeah? But there are answer boxes. You can start fighting for answer boxes and get even more traffic. And finally, the conclusion from this part is refreshing content is always good. Even if you fail, even if you won't be able to achieve these answer boxes, you will be refreshing content on pages. That will definitely bring you up in the regular results. Answering questions that customer may ask. Yes, you want to answer questions that customer may ask because this question predominantly are firing answer boxes. And then you're playing again the search engine result game. So you're following Google, you're treating Google as your advisor. And then a couple of results. When I was implementing this on different verticals, you can see how the visibility was going up. That's are different shapes, but it really works. And then finally, my favorite, uh, my private website, socialmedia.pl, which I'm very proud of because I acquired such a great domain and, you know, sometimes I'm writing there, unfortunately, in Polish, but yeah. Um, and listen, I wish that you can take this home and apply and achieve these results and sleep well because your website is so much overperforming your competitors. So that was me. Thank you very much. Let's be in touch.